Hi, I'm Lucy Paget. Welcome to part three of my uh, my gut health movement series. Today, for this last part, we're going to talk about: Is there a perfect diet? Is there a perfect diet? There are many, many different diets out there, but how do you know which is the right one for you? So let's have a look at that. Right now, there is a lot of talk about the low carb or paleo ancestral diet. And then, previously, historically, over the last 20 years, there was a lot of talk about having a low fat diet. And just yesterday, I was chatting with a client who was telling me that her, she and her husband have started to eat differently because um, his doctor noticed that he had some issues with cholesterol. We talked a lot about that, and what I discovered was that she was still having fairly sugary breakfast. She was still doing a few things that weren't great for her or her husband in terms of their diet. So then we looked a little bit about around fats and whether they were eating good fats, low-quality fats, and I worked with her a little bit to shift her mindset away from the idea that low fat is good. Now I really, really wish during my teens someone had clued me in to the fact that low fat wasn't helpful. I was a little chubby all through my 20s and I also really struggled with skin issues, energy, uh, hangriness, so I would just get evilly horrible when I was, when I was hungry because I was eating a low fat diet and for me it did not serve me. So this raises, first of all, the question of bio-individuality. Is there one diet that is right for everyone? No, there is not a diet that is perfect for everyone. But there are some principles that are right for everyone. So I really like, some of you may have heard of a great interviewer called Sean Croxton, and he often um, uses the statement, jerf which stands for just eat real food. So of the few principles that we could take in looking at how to create a perfect diet for you, this is the first and most important, most simplistic principle that you can take away. Just eat real food. So when you're grocery shopping, try to avoid the middle aisles because the packaged food generally isn't great real food. It's been highly processed, highly refined, it's probably had synthetic vitamins added back in and our body really struggles when we have synthetic foods, when we have low quality cooking oils that become rancid quite easily. We're just so easily bombarding our system with things that don't serve it. So um, go to the outside of the grocery store where you've got the fresh produce, where you've got the fresh meats, where you've got the fresh vegetables. So just eat real food means that you need to get into your kitchen or your loved one needs to get into the kitchen and get some co good cookbooks. So I brought a few cookbooks I really like and the 21 Day Sugar Detox that we run, Diane Sanfilippo has a couple of really good books, both of them with 21 Day Meal Plans, which I highly recommend. Uh, I've just brought a couple of other books because there are lots and lots of really great books that I like with good resources. I really like this, this guy's book as well, The Wild Diet by Abel James. That's a really nice one. And also uh, Alan Christiansen. He's written a book on adrenal, how to reset your adrenals, which I think is a, a, a fairly huge widespread problem for a lot of us. And so this is a really great resource where you can start to link adrenal health and the foods that you're eating and start to get some really deep hormonal healing through eating differently. And when you start to eat differently and eat right for you, it automatically creates a, a better hormonal profile for you. So what I really like and I think is really smart is to start off over here in the low carb land and then to slowly, I've got a little person here who's slowly, slowly walking their way back up the carb spectrum so maybe having some more carbs in their diet, or maybe sticking back down here. Now there's a lot of talk about being in ketosis at the moment, which basically is where your body is just using fats as fuel. That works really well for some people, and for other people it does not work as well. Typically athletic guys that can work really well for, but I definitely know for me that I'm a little bit kind of more on the spectrum, kind of maybe, maybe over here. And there's also, so I'm going to put Jeff, there's also bio-individuality as another important concept that we've just talked about. Whoops, bio-individuality. And then the third principle I want you to think about is 
change over time. So I'm just going to put the word change. So what may be right for you right now may not be right for you next year. So instead of thinking about figuring out the perfect foods for you and really sticking to those, you need to look over time at how your body is doing. So I'm not a fan of a vegan or raw diet. I played around with that kind of eating when I was in my 20s. I did a lot of yoga and everyone in the yoga community was vegetarian and I thought, okay, well, maybe I should be vegetarian. But it didn't serve me. It just wasn't the right way of eating for me. So what I've shifted to is eating really good quality meats. And quality is the other principle that you need to think about. Quality. So we've got here, just eat real food, bio-individuality, so what works for you may not work for your husband. You may have to eat slightly differently. The fact that your body changes over time and looking at the quality of your foods. So organic is obviously best, local is great, seasonal is really great. And when you can combine local, seasonal and organic, and if not organic, then from a farm that really looks at growing things as nature intended, that's going to serve you. And right down here, I put eat real food, food grown as nature intended, and I've got what looks like a little bit of a cross between a pig and a cow, <laughs> eating, eating the right food for it. So make sure when you eat your food, has it been grown as nature intended? Has it been raised as nature intended? What was your food fed? How was the soil that your food was grown in? How was the grass that your animal that you're eating raised on? And if you bear in mind these principles, and again, I suggest starting with lower carbs, so that involves really adding in lots of good, healthy fats, lots of coconut oil, some ghee or clarified butter, um, some lard from pasture-raised animals for your cooking fats, and even in the evening, having a spoonful just of coconut oil just to help stabilize your blood sugar as you're going into the evening. And then just figuring out, just, just shifting things slightly and finding out the right balance for you. Quality, eating real food, bio-individuality, your body changes over time, all will be well.